So it looks like uh, Stephen Furtick has made another false tweet or post on Facebook. A brother of mine sent me this link and I wanted to uh, examine Stephen Furtick's post. Now, we all know that Stephen Furtick is an arc heretic. We know that he's wrong in pretty much everything he says, but it's good to analyze what he says because he has a following. Now, he's not totally wrong, okay? He's partially correct. I want to go ahead and read what he wrote. Following Jesus doesn't change you into something else. It reveals what you've been, who you've been all along. Now, the second part of that is correct. When we come to Christ, our eyes are open to what we were prior to our conversion. And what were we prior to our conversion? We were wretched, sinful, wicked sinners who have broken God's law and were rightly going to inherit exactly what we deserved. And that was the full weight of God's wrath and hell for all eternity. That's what we were prior to conversion. Wicked sinners deserving only of God's wrath. Now, the first part, following Jesus doesn't change you into something else. That's false. That's wrong. And before I go into the correct response to that, uh, I want to talk about what I've mentioned before on my channel, that the majority of these pastors in this country, the, the primary thing that's lacking in their preaching is the doctrine of regeneration. You'd be shocked how many pastors in this country have no idea and do not preach on what it means to be born again what it means to be supernaturally regenerated by the Holy Spirit. The doctrine of regeneration it has been lost and in most cases never found because simply it has not happened to the pastor. See, Stephen Furtick has no idea what regeneration truly is. Now, he probably knows of the term, but he doesn't know what it is. And to a lot of these false pastors, um, and some with good intention, they kind of look at the verses dealing with regeneration as poetry. Uh, it's, it sounds beautiful, uh, becoming a new creation in Christ. That sounds great, but they can't really take it serious because it hasn't happened to them. It's not a reality, okay? Um, and I remember six months after I'd been converted in my Bible reading, or six months after I was saved, I remember coming across that verse in uh, 2 Corinthians 5, and I remember my jaw hit the floor because I was able to look at the verse and then look at my life and look at what happened to me and my life and what happened to me matched the verse. And so it was always amazing when I was able to find verses that pretty much defined what God did to me. It was a literal transformation. It's not just words in a book. This actually happened to me. And I'm seeing the fruit of what happened by my life. And so when we look at the first part of the, what he wrote, following Jesus doesn't change you into something else. That's wrong. What is the definition of change? And that is to make someone or something different to alter or modify, okay? When we look at verses like Ezekiel 36, 26, and I will give you a new heart and a new spirit and I will put within you and I remove the heart of stone from your flesh and it will give you a heart of flesh. And also 2 Corinthians 5, 17, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he has become a new creation or creature. The old has passed away, behold, the new has come. And we see that there is a literal change and from that change comes new desires. And that's a crucial element to understanding everything um, in regards to what it is to be a Christian. And so, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and post a link to this in the description of this video. Thank you for listening.